Welcome to KTN News, our sports news tonight. My name is Lynn Washira. The Parliamentary Labor and Social Welfare Committee is accusing Sports Cabinet Secretary uh, Dr. Hassan Wario of overlooking uh, the legisl legislative procedures while constituting an anti-doping agency of Kenya and executive orders by President Uhuru Kenyatta, led by KPP Member of Parliament Samuel Gishigi. The committee met Thursday morning to discuss an anti-doping legislative uh, proposal tabled, tabled by Chirangani Member of Parliament and 2012 Boston Marathon champion Wesley Correll. Kenyan athletes continue to wait in bated breath to what will become of Kenya's fate ahead of the April 5th deadline for Kenya to comply with the World Anti-Doping Agency Code. The Parliamentary Committee for Labor and Social Welfare met Thursday morning under the stewardship of KPP Member of Parliament Samuel Gishigi to discuss a legislative anti-doping bill that was tabled by Chirangani Member of Parliament Wesley Correll. So what we are creating as a committee is a bill that will guide this nation for the generations to come. Even as Correll's bill get a nod from the committee, there's a draft bill that has already been tabled by the Anti-Doping Agency of Kenya to the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, creating confusion on who has the mandate to come up with the bill. The minister may have a proposal, which I think is what you are holding. But until it comes to parliament, and it hasn't, and is uh, published by parliament, that is nearly uh, some paper somewhere. You need to, to, to understand that. Uh, secondly, the, 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 if the PS or the ministry, sorry, if the minister is giving a document to, to ADA claiming that uh, there's something that is going on and it has not reached parliament, I don't think that is right. Correll's bill recommends criminal of doping and should WADA approve the anti-doping agency of Kenya bill, then it will have to go through parliament for it to become law in a process that is said to be accelerated. The, the, the matter uh, read for the first time, we reduce the period before the second reading and uh, go to the third reading and make sure that we have a law as required by the international bodies uh, within the required time. The new developments from the Parliamentary Committee of Labor and Social Welfare come just a few weeks before the deadline for Kenya to comply with the World Anti-Doping Agency in what seems like a supremacy battle between Parliament and the Sports Ministry with, of course, the Sports CS, Dr. Hassan Mario, being put on the spot. The Ministry has never even, when we, when we try to engage them, the PS told us, don't worry, there's no need, there's no hurry. They, they have had stakeholders meeting, we only see in the media that they are having stakeholders meeting. Kenya is staring at the reality of a ban ahead of the Rio Olympics, raising questions as to why Parliament is getting involved now while ADAC has been in place all along. This thing I've been talking about since when I came to Parliament. I wrote to the Speaker last year, September. If you look at the history of, of even ADAC, ADAC was formed after I've already wrote the Speaker. So really, who is attacking who? With the latest developments, it's now a matter of wait and see as Kenyan athletes await their real Olympics fates. And well, to other news now, Maseno School is not only known in academic excellence, but its sports prowess too. The school prides itself, itself in producing some of the best players in basketball and rugby. Looking at the recent Kenya Certificate of Secondary School Education exams, the most successful candidates were active sports members. Victor Gale reports on how the school creates a balance between books and the field. <laughs> Maseno School emerged at position 4 nationally topping the table in Nyanza and Kisumu County as well as earning the tag of the best public school. <laughs> Away from academics, the school has also replicated the same on the field with numerous appearances in various sporting disciplines at the national level. According to the school principal Paula Gali Otula, during last year's KCSC exams, 90% of those seen sports, mostly rugby, hockey, handball and basketball, scored straight A's. We have six pillars of the school. One of them is for curricular activities. <laughs> Already the National Basketball Defending Champions have begun their build-up to retaining the title for a record eighth time, while the rugby team seeks to reclaim their rugby 15th title that is now with Laser Hill. One may wonder how the team handlers select their final teams, bearing in mind every team has three different teams which are equally good. I think uh, when they come in from one, we can teach them the basics. So as it comes selection, sometimes uh, it, it's, it's a challenge because there's a big pool of boys to choose from and they're good. So sometimes it challenges me, but 
I believe most of the times we get the best sport to play. Two years ago, the institution introduced cricket among their sporting activities and already they have been winning awards from invitational tournaments both within Kisumu County and beyond. Victor Ogale, KTN News in the county of Kisumu. And while back in Nairobi in seven days' time, players will be teeing off at the Barclays uh, Kenya Open and the European Challenge Tour, a first step on the road to Oman's 2016. Uh, this year's event will be held between 17th and 20th of March and will be preceded by the Coca-Cola Pro-Am on the 15th and uh, on 15th and uh, the Barclays Pro-Am on the 16th. Prize money for the 2016 edition of Kenya Open Golf uh, is set to be at Kenya shillings 25 million. And well, that's how we wrap up tonight's edition of KTN Sports, but be sure to join Moses Wahisi right here tomorrow for another comprehensive edition of KTN Sports. My name is Lynn Washira. Have a very good night. But Ben Kitili is up to wrap up KTN Prime.